<laughs> rotation looks like right now on a beta. Let's take a look. Looks like you Starfire precast, set up some dots, pop cooldowns, and Star Surge, and Star Surge, and and Star Surge, and Star Surge. Okay then. All right, but uh, actually though, I'm just making a quick video talking about all the Dragonflight talents for Broomkin, how they currently are in beta, what I think about them. So I'm just going to go through and make some trees really fast. Uh, so starting off in the class tree, uh, you have the basic stuff, take some flat damage and healing, Broomkin form. Uh, and then you have a really big choice right away between, it's what used to be picking between Restoration off spec and uh, Guardian off spec. There's some really powerful defensives available, like Wilhelm Instincts, which used to be a conduit, which is available if you go down the Guardian path. And so for things like Raid and a lot of keys, that'll probably be extremely valuable. It's just such a strong defensive. Um, but then the other side, if you go Resto, you get things like Swift Man and Wild Growth and Remove Corruption and all kinds of good stuff. That's kind of a good pick. Uh, I think for memes, uh, we don't need any utility for the party. We just want to live forever. So we're just going to go down the bear path. <laughs> so you take Thrash, Basic Bear Abilities, Iron Fur. These are all just, you're required to take these to get down the tree. This is a flat 6% DR, which is extremely valuable. Uh, and one of the really good things about going bear, you also get uh, some additional defensiveness when using bark skin. And then the center of the tree, wild charger tiger dash, I'm a wild charge gamer. And then continuing down, kind of force down the center always to take soothe and for stampeding roar, uh, largely because stampeding roar is extremely good and you should always want it. And this node right here is a, one of the only throughput nodes on our main tree that's kind of required to take. Um, and now we have to go back up to the moonkin side where we have range of our abilities, which we're forced to take. Sunfire is a talent, which we obviously need for dots. Uh, Typhoon, be able to knock stuff back, really nice. Pretty much all situations. And then we have one last point to choose between different things. So you can either get Spark Skin Duration, which I think is probably what I'll go. But you can also pick up Rejuve, you can pick up Hibernate, Cyclone, things like that. Uh, and then continuing down, uh, again, we need this throughput node. And then going into our defensives, if you want Well Honed Instincts, which used to be the conduit, it's actually a two point talent right here. And you have to pick this up. And generally, I think Incapacitating Wars is way better than Mighty Bash in almost all situations. Uh, Fuhrer got reworked into Protector of the Pack, which is probably next to useless in most content, to be honest. It's like a weird off heal thing. It just has less value than Nature's Vigil and Heart of the Wild pretty much all the time. But it's right above Well Honed Instincts, which is extremely good. So you might want to consider picking that up. And then going for Nature's Vigil, which is our new cooldown that lets you heal people. Uh, when you deal damage, it's similar to Vampiric Embrace in some ways. Uh, you have to take between Ursals and Mass Entanglement, the old choice node, so I generally like Ursals. And uh, then we get Innervate into Nature's Vigil. Uh, and then we're left with two final points on the tree, and you can pick up Improved Stampeding Roar, which makes your roar one minute, some kind of utility. The thing that's a little rough about this build, though, is we picked up all this defensiveness with a few, as few points as we could possibly spend, and we don't quite have enough points to pick up our D-Curse, which is the main thing that you're missing out on. So for keys where you need a D-Curse, Unfortunately, Wild Honed Instincts is kind of out of reach. Uh, you can take one point in it, <laughs> if you wanted to, and take uh, Remove Corruption, but it's still a little bit scuffed. You really want it to be up every 90 seconds, because it's a lot better. Um, alternatively, One Minute Roar with Improved Stampeding Roar is extremely good. Uh, you can also go down to Heart of the Wild if you need to off-heal or need even more tankiness. Uh, but that's kind of the bear route. If you want to go back from the start, the other real option here is doing the healing route. So way back up at the top, uh, go down Moonkin, take all the required stuff, then we go down Reju, Swift Men, Remove Corruption, and we're still going to take Increased Barks Conduration because that's just really good. Wild Charge, of course, Healing and Healing Taken, and then Wild Growth. Those are kind of, that's kind of the whole healing off tree is you get your D-Curse, you get extra healing, you get Wild Growth, the classic spells. Uh, Astral Influence, more range we need, Typhoon for Knockbacks, Sunfire, Basic Rotation. Uh, and then we have three more points to spend before we go down. So, of course, we need Soothe and Roar, because those are disabilities you always want to have. And you're kind of forced to take Soothe, even when you don't actually want to, uh, just because it's placed above Stampeding Roar. I will say, if there's one change they make to the tree, which I don't think will happen, maybe it could, uh, Soothe being required is kind of lame, because it's a very, very situational thing. It's basically never used in raids, and only in a couple dungeons is good, and on Raging Week. Uh, it being required to take Stampeding Roar which is one of the core pieces of Druid utility, is kind of lame. Uh, but so we have one more point to choose. We can go in Frenzied Regen, we can take Increased Healing and Dark Bark Skin, just go with that for now. Take other utility also. And once again, the throughput node we have to take, 
going back down towards Nature's Vigil. And then we have five points to play with. Unfortunately, there's no way to get well honed Instincts if you go down the whole healing tree. Uh, like I said before, you could take like one point well honed Instincts and kind of do some remove corruption shenanigans, but... With this tree, we still have a lot of points. This is a decent alternative to well Hunted Sticks. It's not as good. It requires you to shift into bear form, but 20% health when you shift into bear is pretty damn good. That's not a bad defensive option. And then we still have three points to play with here. If you need Heart of the Wild off healing, you could definitely spec into that. I can also choose Renewal or One Minute Roar. I'm a One Minute Roar fan myself. And then we have one more point to put into Utility. Uh, for off healing, I probably put it into rejuve duration. But if you're running keys and you need hybrid eight or you need cyclone, those are available for you. And those are kind of the two routes you can go down the class tree. There's not a lot of choice over here. That you're forced to take this. You're forced to take increased range. I mean, I can't imagine playing booming without sunfire. You could save a point without AOE sunfire if you're on a pure single target raid fight, but those are fairly rare in raid to be honest. So I think you're almost always going to be playing with that. That's kind of the class tree wrapped up. Now, what's interesting is how the, the rework tree that just got implemented the other day is the actual spec tree, and there's a lot of fun choices in here. So, first points required, you're always going to want shooting stars. Uh, but then these two points, you already have unique choices. You can take Warrior of Elune, you can not take Warrior of Elune, you can take Starfall, you can not take Starfall. I think in most content, you're really going to want to take Starfall, though. Uh, pure single fights are pretty rare, and it's kind of corridor you kit. Uh, next on our choices, we have... Solstice, which is really good for shooting stars. Orbit Breaker is extremely powerful right now. It's tuned very strong. It gives you a, a full moon probably like once every 30 seconds or so. It's kind of insane. Uh, and so Solstice into Orbit Breaker is like very recommended most of the time right now. Uh, additionally, we got a lot more things involving our Starfire. So Stellar Drift is completely gone. We have no more cast while moving. Uh, to make up for it, though, we have a lot of instant cast in our kit. So it really works out nicely. Uh, there's a couple different modifications you can make to Starfall. Uh, Lunar Shrapnel makes it cleave off your Moonfires, which makes Twin Moons really valuable in AoE situations. Uh, Ethereal Kindling is what used to be baseline. It extends your dots, so Permadotting is very nice. Uh, and then we have this point right here. Uh, I'll talk about this in a second, actually. So let's just go Twin Moons for now. We'll say this is an M-plus build. Lunar Shrapnel for AoE, Ethereal Kindling for dot duration. And now we're thinking about, we're in a key, we really want our Solar Beam. Well, how are we going to get to Solar Beam? Unfortunately... These are the only two node options that lead into Solar Beam. Umbral Intensity is the really bad conduit from the previous expansion. Uh, it's still not great. It's just a slight flat damage increase on your builders, which don't really do a lot of your damage in general. So it's really not a great choice. And the other option is Umbral Embrace. Uh, dealing Astral Damage is a chance to cause your next Wrath or Starfire to become Astral and deal 50% additional damage. Uh, that is actually possibly pretty powerful, especially on single target. And with our tier set actually giving us, uh, I'll go over the tier set in a bit, but our tier set is buffing our builders a bit. And so if you spend your proc of this on a built up spend a builder, then you could potentially deal a decent amount of astral damage. So it's not terrible, but it's probably the better of these two options in pretty much all situations. But you're forced to commit three points to go into solar beam, which feels really bad when we get to the bottom of the tree. I'll talk about it more later. Uh, just for shits and giggles, I'll skip it for now. Uh, next up, we have Orbit Breaker, like I was talking about. Lots of full moons. The way it's tuned right now, it's just too strong enough to pick up. Kind of required at the moment. Maybe it'll change in the future. Uh, but it's just a lot of astral power generation and a lot of free damage. Uh, next up, we have this choice node here. Star Weaver, which is Weaving Star Surge and Star Fall. And Rattle the Stars. Star Weaver might be good, maybe, if they buff it. But it's just... Rattle the Stars is an insane button right now. Uh... It reduces the cost of Star Surge and Star Fall when you spend them, and it's kind of a maintenance buff. It has two stacks, and you just cast one of your spenders every five seconds, and it stays up permanently. I think this is going to be the choice in all content, pretty much no matter what at the moment. It, playing dungeons with it feels amazing. You could just spam Star Fall. Like I was showing before in Warcraft Logs, you just spam Star Surges. It gets down to 16 Astral Power Star Surges. On top of that, you have Orbit Breaker Generation. We have this new quote on here, Astral Communion Generation. You have mushroom generation. You have all kinds of star. You have all kinds of astral power coming in, and your spenders are just so cheap you can just spam them out. It's kind of insane. Uh, moving on, uh, we have a force of nature, which is trees. Obviously, really good for keys. Really important for tank utility. Uh, then we have nature's balance, which is pretty decent. Uh, you're forced to choose between stellar inspiration, which is kind of a pure single target node. Uh, it just gives you procs of uh, stellar flare, which is decent, but it's not amazing. And we also have Nature's Balance, which of course keep 50 Astral Power and generate some out of combat. 
I'm generally an interest balance person. I think Stellar Inspiration could be decent if they tuned it better in single target, but in Mythic Plus, it's definitely not going to have a lot of value. Uh, choosing Celestial Alignment, of course, our biggest cooldown. Uh, and then we have Star Lord here, which is an okay note. It's just a flat haste buff sometimes. Uh, it's kind of annoying to play around, to be honest, but you're forced to take it for the most part because we have a new ability, Wild Mushroom. Uh, wild Mushrooms, they feel amazing to play with. You place a mushroom at the feet of a monster, and it grows after two seconds, deals a bunch of nature damage, and generates five astral power per target hit, up to 20 astral power total. And it's uh, three charges, 30 second cooldown. It feels really good to press. It just it, it flows perfectly in between you see yourself running low on astral power, you put a mushroom down, you cast one more ability, and then boom, you're full astral power again. It just feels amazing to play with. It highly recommended taking it. Uh, next up we have Waning Twilight over here. When you have three periodic effects on a target, deal increased damage to them. Now, one thing about the mushrooms is there's actually a node below them where it gives you a dot on every enemy struck by the mushroom and a 50% slow, which is actually a pretty good slow, so that's not to be discounted. But the big thing is it gives an AoE dot. So if they change Waning Twilight to work with this mushroom dot, which I've heard they're somewhat planning to do, it would actually get a lot of value in AoE. But at the moment, it only works with Stellar Flare, Moonfire, and Sunfire. And it's really impossible to mass apply those dots easily. So Waning Twilight just doesn't have a lot of value right now. Which is unfortunate because Astral Communion is a lot of fun to play with. It's just a lot of free Astral Power generation. But in Mythic Plus right now, with the way Heroic Dungeons are playing, I just don't think Waning Twilight's going to have a lot of value. And so... It's a big investment to get Astral Communion. Unfortunately, it's not going to work out. Uh, but if they change Waning Twilight's work with this Mushroom Dot, I, that would drastically change the tree. Uh, Astral Communion would be way more viable in AoE. All right, uh, back to the center of the tree. We have our choice node between Arcanic Pulsar, the legendary we're using at the end of Shadowlands, and Syzygy. So Syzygy is a new ability that lasts... It basically, you're, this is a choice node between do you want more CA uptime or do you want a more powerful CA? Uh, so Syzygy does an initial burst of damage when you pop CA and also mass supplies dots in the area. Uh, Primordial Canic Pulsar is every 300 astral power you spend, you get a proc of Celestial Alignment for 12 seconds. Uh, but the really powerful thing about Pulsar is with damage with cost reductions from things like Rattle the Stars, our Star Surges get down to 16 astral power, but they still count towards 30 astral power spent towards this 300, which lets us have obscene CA uptime at the moment. People in raids are having like 70% CA uptime, and Mythic Plus, you're just getting procs all the time, you're in cooldowns all the time, it feels amazing. So for now, it's definitely the go-to play. Although Syzygy, in theory, could be really cool. It could be a really powerful three-minute burst if they tune down Arcanic Pulsar and maybe push up Syzygy a little bit. Uh, and then continuing down Soul of the Forest, exactly the same as Shadowlands, just extra damage on our Starfire. Probably going to take that in AoE. And then we have this node here. After an Eclipse ends, you gain 15% haste for six seconds. Uh, it is actually pretty nice. I mean, 15% haste is pretty substantial. It feels pretty good. Uh, I generally like to pick it up. And so one of the big things is you're, you're sacrificing something here. If you're going for your kick, you cannot take everything down here. So you're giving up some form of damage for a mediocre damage talent and your kick. But your kick is really strong, so it probably will end up being taken, but it's just interesting to look at without it. Uh, moving on, Power of Goldrin is a really powerful single target ability, but... Uh, in Mythic Plus, that procs only single target, probably not the most value. Uh, the dot I was talking about on your mushroom earlier, very powerful, does a lot of damage. Below that, choice node between Moons and Fury Balloon. Generally, Moons is just better in single target, Fury Balloon and AoE, so we'll take Fury Balloon. Uh, down at the bottom here, these nodes are okay. So this node is actually interesting. When I first read it, I thought it was absolutely terrible. Basically, you get double astral power generation for Starfire or Sunfire, uh, sorry, for or Moonfire or Sunfire when you're in the appropriate Eclipse. I thought it would be really bad at first because it's 3 AP to 6 AP, which is just not a lot. But after reading it, after playing with it a little bit, it might be... You spend a lot of time setting up your Moonfires in keys in, in Heroic Dungeons right now. Uh, and so getting extra Astral Power for it might be worth... I do think with the way Ethereal Kindling works and you have permanent dots and packs that live long enough, this has basically zero value because you're only applying once and then you're just never doing it again. But in like low keys or like heroic stuff like that, it feels pretty good because it just gives you more AP when you're setting up dots and you can keep your star falls cranking. Uh, next we have Radiant Moonlight, or which is also just reduces the Fury of Loom cooldown. Uh, this is decent. I mean, it's fairly strong, but I just it's just not enough value for the point, I don't think, with the other things that are available in the tree. 
So continuing down, we have a choice node between Convoke and Incarn. Uh, this is an interesting choice node. I, I, the idea is you're picking, once again, between a more powerful cooldown and a more uptime on your cooldown type thing. Uh, I So in theory, I would like to play with Convoke, but the th node below is just extremely powerful for Incarn. We'll talk about that. Uh, so right now, Incarn is just the king, and in PvE, at least, you will never run Convoke unless it gets changed. This node below that choice is... Uh, uh, the Astral Power cost of Star Surge is reduced by 10, and the Astral Power cost of Star Falls reduced by 15. Um, the alternative is it changes... It's basically the Legendary from Shadowlands that buffs your Convoke, so it becomes a 1-minute cooldown and has more chance to proc a full moon, which isn't bad, but the thing that's really crazy is Illumin's Guidance, the Astral Power reduction on your spenders, it stacks with Rattle the Stars. So that lets you get the crazy cost reduction, 16 cost Star Surges, where you can just spam it out over and over and over again. And man, does that feel good to play with. I This probably is going to get changed, but on beta at the moment, it feels really fun to play with. Your spenders are so cheap. They're so powerful. You're in CA all the time. This this uh, reduction only applies when you're in CA, but we're in CA all the time because of Pulsar. And so your spells are super cheap, and then when they're super cheap, they build Pulsar really fast, and you're in CA more. It just flows into itself so nicely, and it's so fun to play with. It's a really a joy right now. Uh, moving on to the left side here. So, Circle of Life and Death, I'm not thrilled with how this plays. Uh, with how reliant we are on our dots with Lunar Shrapnel dealing damage, uh, it kind of sucks that they end earlier, but it is what it is. The things below it are pretty powerful, so it's it's worth taking for right now in Mythic Plus. Denizens of the Dream, your Moonfire and Sunfire have a chance to summon a Fairy Dragon. I think this was a tier set back in Hellfire Citadel or something. I don't know if it's working the same way, because I heard that back then it was dealing a lot of your damage, but at the moment these Denizens do almost nothing. They are very... It's kind of like Brawn from Shadowlands. They do very little damage, but what they do do is have a node below them that gives you a flat 6% Arcane and Nature damage buff when they're out, and they're out a lot. You probably have like over 60-70% uptime throughout dungeons with these guys. And because it's Arcane and Nature damage, it actually applies double for our Astral damage, so it's really a 12% flat damage buff to your spenders. That's almost always up, which is extremely powerful at the moment. Uh, again, this may get changed in the future, but... Right now, this node is just too good to not take. Uh, moving on, we have these two nodes in the middle. Uh, so Astral Smolder, uh, critical hits from your builders cause the target to bleed for a little bit more damage. Uh, it's just not... Again, our builders don't do most of our damage. They're just not that good, especially with how much Astral Power Gen we have. We're just spamming spenders all the time. We don't press builders very much, so this really doesn't have a lot of value. Uh, balance of all things is actually pretty decent, so when you enter an Eclipse, you get increased Critical Strike Stance with Arcane and Nature damage. Uh, this is not bad. Uh, it's a two-point node. It's just a slight flat damage increase at the start of your Eclipse, and especially with Nature's Grace playing around it, you have a lot of haste during that window, so you can get some good stuff off, but it's just not it's not worth it over something like Sundered Firmament. Sundered Firmament is the tier set from the end of Shadowlands, so every other Eclipse we enter generates a Fury of a Loon and a 25% effectiveness. They did change it, so now it only gives 10 Astral Power per Fury of a Loon from it, but that's still pretty powerful. Uh, it's generally worth taking, I would say. And now we're at the point where I am sad. <laughs> we have two points remaining to take something. Uh, we could take two points in Umbral Embrace, which is terrible. Warrior of a Loon's a pretty good one-off. Uh, and then you could throw one point in something like Nature Balance of All Things, get some free crit, you could get less cooldown on Fury of a Loon, something like that. The thing that's really sad is... We have all this really, really great stuff that makes the spec feel amazing, and two extra points, and we're just one point shy of the kick. It just feels bad, man. It's so close to being perfect. It's so close to getting every single thing that I want, and then also picking up the kick for free. But unfortunately, you have to sacrifice something in order to pick up this kick. Uh, so at the moment, I think the thing that makes the most sense is you give up Nature's Grace, and then you take points into here and get your kick, and then we still have all the points to go back and pick up everything else that we had before. Uh, well, actually, that's not even really true. <laughs> sorry, I think actually, sorry. I think the thing that makes the most sense to give up is Soul of the Forest. Uh, while Soul of the Forest is really good in AoE, uh, I do think Nature's Grace, unfortunately, is on the pathway for us to pick up Denizens of the Dream. So we actually can't get to these nodes if we don't have this talent picked up. And then that gives us just enough points to pick up everything that we want. And this is this is the current tree that I would probably be using in Mythic Plus. In reality, I, I really hope they potentially consider changing Solar Beam and not locking it behind two-point nodes. 
I also think Warrior Balloon is a really nice pickup and feels really good to play with. Uh, I do think Order Breaker may be changed and you might get rid of that. Uh, there's a couple different things that could happen to this tree that could make it different. But at the moment, this is like pretty much what I've been playing and this is what I've been having fun with. Uh, Soul of the Forest, again, it's really good. But again, our builders just aren't pressed a lot right now and it just doesn't have a ton of value. But if you want to go full meme, I mean, what's really fun is if you just don't want your kick, you should go Warrior Balloon up here, get even more Starfires out, they get more Astral Power, Soul of the Forest, Incarn. We just have so many points to get everything that we want. <laughs> you can even get Reduced Cooldown up here, Balloon, pick up Power of Goldrin if you want more damage on bosses. You can pick up Balance of All Things. If you drop the kick, you just have so much freedom in this build. And I think it's really unfortunate. I mean, Solar Beam is extremely powerful. I don't think in reality, in hard content, you're going to be able to do this, but... And does it feel good to drop your kick and just pick up all this cool stuff? <laughs> Alright. Uh, so I think that's enough of the Mythic Plus build. Uh, moving on to Raid, Pure Single Target. Uh, pure Single Target's actually very, very simple. Uh, because they isolated all of our Starfall talents to over here, and they're completely skippable, uh, if you're going for Pure Single Target, you just click every single thing that's not Starfall, because you're forced to. Uh, pure Single Target, we definitely want Stellar Flare. Uh, and now I still have to spend two more points. Again, I'm Brawl Intensity, not great. I'm Born Brace, we'll take. And then, once again, just click it down. Click every single thing that isn't Starfall. <laughs> Pretty simple. Big Trents, just for our Astral Power Gen, Nature's Balance, Star Lord. Uh, Mushrooms are good, but I don't think they're great in single target. We would definitely want Power of Goldrin for that single target damage. On Moons, extra Full Moon would be nice even additional damage. If you're going full single target, I think it's unlikely that you'll ever need a kick, but if you do, you could take it. Incarn still for single target. Elude's Guidance still for single target. Circle of Life and Death. Essence of the Dream. Sundered Firmament. We have one final point left. I think the most value you can get out of this one point, I mean, in reality, uh, most of the time it's going to be Starfall, but you could pick between your kick. Uh, you could pick between one point and Umbral Intensity, which I would not do. It's not very good. Uh, one point balance of all things is most likely what you're going to end up taking in for your single target. And this is kind of the pure single target. Starfall's not even talented build that you would go. Uh, but in raid, I mean, most of the time there's going to be ads of some kind. And as soon as there's any kind of ad, you definitely want to take Starfall. Uh, especially Rattle the Stars is really powerful and even gives you a lot of damage in single target with that huge astral power reduction. Uh, so the reality is you're going to want to take Starfall most of the time. Uh, so, taking Starfall, we'll just go straight for the Rattle of the Stars. Uh, Ethereal Kindling, uh, this is a raid build, so generally in raid, there's some situations where you have spread AoE and you want your dots to be permanent, but it's a two-point investment that we really just don't have to take in, in most raid situations. Big Shooting Stars, Solstice, let's go Stellar Flare again, but you can take either Twin Winds or Stellar Flare. Uh, and then once again, we'll take... You have, a, you have a good choice here between what you could take. So if you need your kick, you could start working towards that. Otherwise, Warrior Balloon is probably a decent damage gain in most raid situations with some burst AoE. And then immediately we're going to pick up Rattle the Stars, just so strong at the moment. Star-Lord for that haste. Uh, depending on the fight, you might want Mushrooms, you might not want Mushrooms. If there's adds, you definitely want it. If there's not, you might not. Orb Breaker, once again, really good. And the thing that happens over here, which is nice, because we're not picking up Ethereal Kindling, we have a lot more points to pick up Waning Twilight and Astral Communication, Astral Communion, which gives us additional Astral Power Generation, which feels really nice. Uh, moving down here, uh, again, you could pick up, if you're going for your kick, I'd recommend Umbral Embrace probably, and then going towards your kick, but in this case, we're going to say we don't for the average raid fight. Uh, Stellar Inspiration, just more uptime on Stellar Flare. Celestial Alignment, Pulsar for the same reasons as before. Uh, Soul of the Forest, because we're running Warrior of Elune, probably will have some good value, so I'm going to pick it up. Uh, Nature's Grace, no longer needed. It's an okay talent, again, it's a decent amount of haste, but, I mean, you just, the real value in it before was that it got us down to here. But we'll take it for now, though, just for some free haste. Now at the bottom of the tree, once again, we're going to go straight through Life and Death, and straight down to Friends of the Fae and Sun and Firmament, because they're just really good. Uh, Incarn and Illum's Guidance, of course. They're, again, just really strong. Power of Goldrin, pick up Moons. And then we have two final points to play around with. You could get Ethereal Kindling if you want your dots extended. You could pick up Radiant Moonlight. You could pick up Bounce Wall Things if you just want some extra damage. 
you have a lot of choice down here with how you want to finish it out depending on the fight. And that's kind of the Moon Kid tree. It's actually, I, I've really enjoyed playing with this. Um, I'll put up a screenshot, once again, of all the three builds that I went over. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of fun to play with. It, it, you have so much choice depending on fights, so much variety. It feels really good. Mushrooms are a joy to press. Astral Communion, for being so simple, feels really fun to press. Denizens of the Dream. It's just a flat damage buff, but you get these cute little fairies to follow you. All right, well, anyway, I'm just stalling for the end of the video. Thanks for watching. That's my thoughts in the trees. I'm sure there'll be updates. I'll probably make other posts when they all get updated. Uh, but yeah, Boom Cannon feels really great. I'm really excited to play it in Dragonflight. I'm looking forward to it greatly. But yeah, thanks for watching. See you later.